I'm up on the rooftop today. I'm trying to dampen out the vibrations I've been picking up off these antenna wires. <laughs> Sound like an airplane inside the house sometimes. I removed the straps I had bracing this in and replaced them with cables. Hopefully that will take some of that uh, slapping and vibration out. I also am trying a little homemade vibration dampener on this top wire. I don't know how well it's going to work. I have three different kinds of antenna wires stretch out between the barn and the house, 150 feet long, and I'm using them to experiment uh, harvesting whatever electromagnetic waves I can pick up and convert them into just electricity or on some LEDs. This side here, I still left my straps on, they're vibrating a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much in the barn. First, the top wire is just a plain bare 14 gauge copper wire. This one on this side is a, another 14 gauge wire, but wrapped around it is some wire mesh. And the third one on the other side is some copper tinsel wrapped around a 14 gauge copper wire. So it's just some stuff I was experimenting, showed on the other videos. But in this video, we're going to experiment with three different kinds of receiving circuits. I first became interested in trying to harvest antenna energy when I heard about the Joe Tate circuitry. This was in the late 1980s. Joe Tate invented something that he called the ambient power module, which was just some circuitry he would use to convert some radio waves or static or whatever was available into usable power. Well, a little bit of power. It was like it was enough to run a clock. But I became kind of fascinated with that, and I wanted to try that myself. Joe Tate got a patent for his ambient power module in 1986. And what it really is is a voltage quadrupler. So whatever voltage you're measuring between the antenna that you put up in the ground, it multiplies it by four. And it's usually just a tiny bit of power, and it takes a while to charge up the capacitors, but you do get something. Now, when I first tried this years ago, many years ago, I lived out in a pretty remote area, and I put a circuitry together, and I was maybe getting two and a half, three volts, and it took like hours to charge a capacitor, a small capacitor up to that. So there was something, but there really wasn't much to work with. Where I live now, I'm closer to a little more EM waves. There's power lines around and there's broadcast stations. So I am picking up quite a bit more than before and actually have a pretty big antenna now. In my current setup, I have those three antenna wires running and I got them all tied together right here. And this other wire right here, this is a ground and it goes out. Across the driveway, you can kind of see where we buried it. It goes down the hill to a pond. It's kind of froze up right now. But it's a good ground. It's about 250 feet away. And the first thing I want to do is I'm checking the frequency. I'd like to see what exactly it is where the energy is coming from. And this is kilohertz, and it's jumping all around. And this is the waveform. I think it's just a bunch of static, I think, I don't know. But this is what's happening. That's the source of the energy. And in other videos, I showed these LEDs being lit, and I was just using, this is a bridge rectifier with a filter cap. It's this circuitry right here. But the one I want to try right now is the Joe Tate one. And I put something like that together right here. It's kind of a messy one. But this will be the antenna connection. I'll get this set together. And I'm going to charge up this capacitor to see if it will charge up to. I guess first I should check the voltage on this right now to see what we're getting. This is the voltage right now that I'm picking up between the antennas 
in the ground. This is AC. This meter is probably drawing it down some because, you know, this is, we're just playing with a tiny bit of electricity, microamps, microwatts. I think the first thing I'll do, though, I'll charge up this capacitor to see what it charges up to. So I'm just going to disconnect the meter and hook it up to here, and I'll come back and I'll show you what we charge it up to. Well, right now I got the bridge rectifier hooked up between the antenna and ground, charging up this little capacitor, and it's charging it up pretty fast. It also drains down fast just by <laughs> touching the meter to it, because this isn't a big capacitor, it's like one microfarad. So we're getting over 50 volts. I think it was up to maybe 57 maybe at the peak. This is DC, because this is rectifying it. Before, I think that's probably all it's going to go up to. You know, this we're just playing with microamps here. So just me touching the meter drains this capacitor down up to 55. Okay, now I'm going to hook up the Joe Tate circuitry, and we'll see what that charge is up to. I have my Joe Tate circuitry hooked up now. This is varies a little bit from their components they use. These are called for disk capacitors. I'm using some capacitors a little different value and I'm using one in 4007 diodes. This calls for the one in 34 germanium diodes. These diodes won't hold up under the voltages that I'll be getting off of here. Yeah, I think these are, uh, I think they're only good for like 70 volts and they're gonna get way over that. And I'm charging up this capacitor right here. It's been charging. This is a 10 microfarad motor run capacitor. I use these because they hold the charge pretty good. And it's been about 10 minutes, and we are up to 62 volts already. So if I was using the germanium diodes, pretty soon they would start to fail. I have done that before. You burn them out. But that's why I'm using the higher voltage diodes and it's kind of messy but that is the circuitry with a little different components because i need it for higher voltages here and we'll come back when we get this built up i'll check it one more time you know it's going to take a while well it's been about 20 minutes now and i just wanted to check it again i know we're not there yet but let's see what we got oh. 112 and see my meter draws it down it's going to take a while because every time you try to increase the voltage we're lowering the current so it's going to take longer with that kind of circuitry so i'll come back so it's been charging now for about an hour and a half and we are up to almost well, 217 volts it's probably pretty close as high it's going to go. I go a little bit higher. Well, I waited another half hour. So it's been two hours since I started charging this capacitor. And I'll test it now. Here we go. So it's up to 221. But it just quickly drops because the meter is drawing it down. I think that's all the higher it went. 221 volts. I'm going to do a little comparison right now. I got the Joe Tate circuit connected directly up to some LEDs. Just need to connect the ground. And there you can see the LEDs came on, not real bright. And the current we have is 2.7 microamps. And I'll compare that to the full bridge rectifier. I now have a full bridge rectifier set to be connected. I just got to attach the ground and we'll compare it with the Joe Tate circuit. Then there's the LEDs, a little bit brighter. And the current we got now running through it is 8.8 .8 microamps, 8.7, 8.8. I've seen it up to 10, 10 or 11 in different conditions, but that's what we got right now. And that's why I've been running the full bridge rectifier. I didn't need the high voltage 
I needed more current, and with the full bridge, we're getting more current. I'd like to mention Paul of Inventor 3 YouTube channel. He did a lot of videos using the Joe Tate circuit. If it's something that you're interested in, he'd probably appreciate your visit. And I'd also like to mention Grant's Pass TV Repair YouTube channel. He did a number of videos with uh, crystal radio sets, and he showed how he was pulling in electricity with his tuned circuits. And that was pretty interesting, too. After going over the Joe Tate circuit, I started some of my own R&D, and I started experimenting with a voltage doubler. And the do it attach antenna up here and ground down here. And after some experimenting, I discovered I could make it simpler yet and just eliminate this capacitor. And I could do that because the antenna itself is acting as a plate on a capacitor, so I can make it simpler yet. And I came up with this circuit here. And this type of circuit is what I was using in my earlier videos of several years ago. And I drew a schematic so I could understand it. Uh, with these arrows, I'm following the Fleming electron flow theory. I know other people believe something else is flowing in a different direction, but I'm not going to argue with you. This is what I'm going by so I could understand it. And now I'll go ahead and I'll compare this with the Joe Tate circuit and the full bridge rectifier. I'm now connecting up a double M antenna energy harvester and charge up the same capacitor and just need to connect up the ground and we should be getting some action charging up we'll let this go for a while and see what it comes up to just using a connector there because it's such a simple circuit two diodes and a capacitor and a ground in antenna. It's pretty simple. It's moving right along. We'll come back. Okay, well, it's been about 10 minutes, and we'll test it out here. 110 and dropping. I think that's all higher it's going to go. That's a voltage doubler, and that's about double the voltage. So it's about 10 minutes. And now I have the double M antenna harvester connected up to the LEDs. Hard to tell the difference in brightness. We'll look at the current. And with the current, we're at 5.1 microamps. So it's like midway between the Joe Tate and the full bridge. Full bridge is still the best for current. I guess that's why I use it. But you can change voltages with these other two circuits if that's what you need to do. You can get some impressive voltages with the Joe Tate circuit and some others from just an antenna and a ground. But I never had any matching load for the higher voltages. So I try to stick to the lower voltages and higher currents. And because this is such low power, it's just a fun hobby. So I hope you found some interest in this. And thanks for your time.